Kids Crypto Sniper, thank you very much for your patience. Indeed, indeed, patience we are. Um, hit us with some puppy licks. Um, um, yum, yum. We like our puppy licks in the morning. In fact, they're called likes. But anyway, you can do that as well. Um, we're on 90. There's 287 of you waiting. That means 200 of you say, stuff you. <laughs> oh dear. Um, please give us a like. Here's a share. Even better. It's a big currency. So what are we going to talk about today? We're going to talk about that thing we told you about. That thing we said when uh, BitBoy and others are telling you there's a big crash coming. We said cot indicator. Great. Next quarter you need to buy as long. Uh, this is as close to a moon call as you can get out of us. We don't do moon calls. Million dollars. Million. 10 million. No, we don't do that. We do technical analysis. We have real geometry. We do what we're supposed to do um, and say where the next leg up are coming and to the next level. And we walk you up the whole staircase, however high that may go. Stairway to heaven with me, my fine friends. Yes, indeed. Um, so glad to be back. Glad to be with you. Um, and we're going to be talking Bitcoin. We're going to be talking a couple of alts. We're going to give you a little sneaky preview of one that might do rather well for you. Do well, do well, do well. Might not. Uh, remember, own your own trades, not uh, for the crypto brats. You've got to be big and bold and you've got to make your own mind up about what we say. Um, by the way, don't forget the mini series for those that have no money. Book a call so that you can be part of our wealth building in reset times. And it's not just what you make, it's what you get to keep in terms of structures. How are you looking after that? It's too late if you've made it all in your private name in the same country you were born in with the same passport, with the same tax extractor, and you're still living there and you've now made one million. Ten million dollars, and now they come with a big fat bill for you. Because why? Cause why? Because they are extractors, and that's what they do. Uh, just like the scorpion on the frog, it's what they do. Stinging buyakasha is what they do. Okay, let's talk about the charts. Let's go up. Let's go. Which side is it? That side. Let's go have a look at the Bitcoin and show you what you missed in trading to the level um, with us in Bitcoin. Here is your cot signal. Come and join me with a chart. Cot signal. Draw. 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 We've got lots of Fibonacci colors everywhere. Um, let's go with little boy PP blue. There was your Fibonacci draw, um, your buy signal on the cot indicator. Here are our key levels. Grab the pen, grab the pen. So we've mentioned these many, many times. Round number 40K on the dark blue line over here. 40K right there. Just run. Then the next one up. This was a big one. It was mentioned many times by us. 44K. Da, 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 da. trading to the level, trading to the level. You saw it there, a little bit of a broadening structure there. Then you went up and over and you got your final last upside HVF. We are on, by the way, I didn't mention the time frame. We're on the two hourly, two hourly. Some of you might need reminding of where that is. Maybe I should just do a quick uh, clean and just start again because people just they need to know macro to micro. They want Google Maps coming in, zoning in from which continent am I? This is the continent you on. That should remind most of you where you are at. That's it. That's where you are at. So we called a uh, special meeting um, inside our community. Binance, I've got up. Binance, I've got it for those that can't see it. Um, so we, we called a special community check-in. Um, when we were going very impulsively here. And our uh, opinion was, so let's, we'll start on the bigger time frame. I'll give you some of that key levels later on the lower time frame. So here's the cot indicator uh, giving you the go. This was very impulsive. Then it rested at this localized high. There was also, wait for it, the 47.5. Yes, we'll come back to that in a minute. And then it was going really strong here. We said this is going to be run. We jumped on and we got extra longs Bitcoin for the surge that came through and we gave the next key levels that it might run and where it might pause. Where it might pause, another level we've given you, which was the 54K. So this is called trading to the level and it is knocking out levels and then after it's made a level, it pulls back uh, and rests a wee bit. But overall, since your cot indicator call, what did we tell you? We, see, we said be heavily long. Others have said big crash in Bitcoin coming. This is how it's gone since that cot call for you. How about them apples? Gradient to the upside. 
And this is highly impulsive, and it further takes out that high, which could have been uh, what we call our secondary high and secondary low. And of course, that would be your first high at 64K and your primary low, which was the 28.8K. So you were 64 to 28.8, and now you're over here. And we think that this is a preemptive strike jump. It's almost jump the gun like a 100 meter sprinter that's trying to get the fastest reaction time break and has skipped the jump gun almost it's just shot right up there could be another possibility it could make a secondary high a little higher up and then pull down a little bit deeper i'm not so sure that's it because this is really really high momentum momentum analysis you get the big momentum but that was early you had to be early with us on our falling wedge draw to get that level of speed to the upside we were in here before even the break it's the best part of the trade to get what happened after that it got a little bit rounding when it got up to this level it got a little bit rounding and we were squeezing the last of the summer wine out of that mini hvf there that got us out at the 52. so let's take it into that lower level you know where we are on the map this is a big pot potential continuation that you are maybe experiencing an early preemptive break that's right um we also warned and we were watching inside the community the btc dominance people stopped watching dominance we were just reiterating the value of dominance and this was the draw you would have got on dominance let's uh, take you in there btcd while we're on the big time frames uh, and drop it down a teensy weeny bit and we'll let the eye come back on there was a real real um break of an inverted head and shoulders let's just see if we can get dominance on one of the other templates i have so many different chart jaws um let's see if it in there this looks like the one four hour there we go look how that performed to target look how that performed to target btc dominance my good friends this was drawn we were discussing this and we got in and we said you're sitting on your 42.75 yes sir left shoulder double head how many people were giving you inverted head and shoulders on btc dominance before the bitcoin pump before the Bitcoin pump and warning about it, we thought it could be rising wedge or dominant breaks. When it started going here, we were getting in on it. We had a great day yesterday with the spike through up and now she's resting and what's actually happening is the alts are getting out of bed. And this is the tag team game. But overall, they'll all be going macro up. But Bitcoin led, God market. People said, oh, everyone's sitting in alts. How many people knew there would be Bitcoin? Um, well, were you looking at your BTC dominance? Did you see this impulsive move? When, you, when it took out that, you should have been all in, jumping in and up to there. And then you should have pivoted back into your alts. How many of you did that? How many of you did that? Be honest. You're not there. You're not in the community. You're not discussing it. Book a call. Um, anyway, so Bitcoin dominance was the theme. Uh, yesterday and the day before and now as you see it's uh, kind of resting and pulling back we'll come back to the bitcoin chart what it's doing on a lower time frame in a second but you needed to understand this to know how you position for that squirter mentals that went on over there um, so good so bitcoin dominance recovered let's go into the lower time frame onto bitcoin and show you that trading to the level stuff we started after we showed you where we are on the map so into the map we go so classic case of trading to the level. So flat bottomed HVF structure got the macro cot signal. As I say, in almost fairly immediate, the cot signals are strong with the exception of the last one after a major head and shoulders dump. It got preemptively pushed. But this is a fairly, fairly immediate. And up, up, up and away. Flat bottomed HVF structure gave you a target over there and off you ran. Now, we'll show you this on a smaller level. This was your 40K. That was your 44. Then we gave the next key level. You waited for it, 47.5. It's this dash blue one. It's the most important, I would say. It's the head and shoulders neckline. I made it a bit smaller because it was so dominant. We all knew it so well. Um, I'm probably not easily going to be able to select it now. Um, is it the one? No, I got the wrong one. So it's this one here that's going through there. We had it so big on our chart uh, for so long um, that we no longer needed it to be so big. So that's it over there. And it comes with that number over there. Go away, you useless menu. Man, oh man, jumping between these different apps. It's a pain. So 47.5 was your next run from 44. By the way, low time frame analysis. If you've done this, 
you would have seen key aspects that regularly happen. We teach a lot uh, about this in the community and we reiterate and you get to hear a lot more about it. But look at these tiny fractals just before key levels of significance. One of the greatest gifts you get. Tiny little HVF fractal right there uh, just before the key level of significance tells you you're probably going to melt it on up. Look at him go. There she is. I almost need a lower time frame to show that to you properly. You almost need a drop. And people say technical analysis. It doesn't work. It doesn't work. This is right down to a five minute. Can you believe it? Right down to a five minute. Let's show you that. There it is. Ah, that's the one after. <laughs> there were many of them. Hold on, hold on. Got to scroll him through, scroll him through, scroll him through. It's such a long job when you're on five minutes. So many candles. Uh, should have done go two, shouldn't I? Man, that's annoying. Okay, let's go back up to 15. It's going to take me all day to get five minutes back there. There it is. Bring it on down. Can you see that? That little squeeze took you all the way up to the next level. Great, great, great uh, move. Uh, da -da 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 -da. bring it up so this is concepts of trading to the level and key levels of significance and these were all proven key levels of significance prior to us getting there previously in other moves that's why our laws always hold you project onwards raise into the future because what was once significant will be significant again okay so hvf little squeezy off 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 you go you get in there next thing you know you smashed it up to the 47.5 that became our medium term base station it took a while to shrug that off so you've come from 40 44 47.5 you can see the trend here getting a little bit smaller as you're heading up we're getting into harder yards for a bit carrying on on this micro analysis and then we'll tell you where we are now and what we think comes next you started to broaden but such is the strength you break out out of the broadening structure to the upside in the end there it goes like that again with a fractal squeezy squeezy and why were you squeezy squeezy this time because you have the, you had the capping descending grind line of the broadening structure over there you had the lower the lower base there and you started squeezing and the rising wedge up because you were at the 50k that you grinded to so you went from when you jumped onto the 47.5 you ground sideways for a while and squeezed higher to complete the 50k so you did 40 to 44 that's a 4k differential 44 to 47 and a half that's a three and a half k differential 47 and a half to 50 that's a two and a half uh, k differential can you see what's going on here um, then you had another little uh, broadening structure. Uh, we were micro watching this. It was great fun trading the Bitcoin. We felt good things coming. And we'll take you into this final little uh, few minutes that took you into yesterday. What fun it was. I love trading, man. I love trading. I love investing. And I love uh, helping others do it better. And it was awesome. It was good fun. Uh, and we made money. So it's always, it's always fun when you make money, isn't it? Uh, like that broadening structure on a pole little bit of a rest where's it all happening at your 50k level what do you do you run up to our next level 1800 so you've gone two and a half from 47 and a half to 50 1800 where did that level come from that same flat bottomed last of the summer wine hvfs for the 52 run that was 51 800 target made 52 that target boom double top there came down a little bit, couldn't go down any further, the bearish was not going to happen, came back up, another micro fractal, drop that onto one minute, two minute, three minute, as you like, getting ready to blow the next key level of significance, where was the next one? 54, where did we get 54 from? 2.618 on four, uh, the first cup gold nugget, I've given that to you before, it was 54,200, repeatedly these levels have been before, we've laid them down, they took out the tops of the shoulders, of the head and shoulders, uh, and the 64k high, if you had used overperformance bands, and the 2.618 from down, had 7, 8, 9,000 as we were breaking, all the way up, and you'd put a take profit on 54, apart from that small moment where you touched 64, you would have got out of one of the best and earliest places, you would have bought back at your cot buy signal in and around 28,800, you would have doubled the amount of Bitcoin you had or Bitcoin valuation in alts in a single move, my good friends. That's what's happened. So since then, what's happened? We made the next level, 54.2, really fast, super little fractal, smashes it. And this was also taking the previous high, that blue line marking out the previous high. Now you see, 
you eye up a previous high and you do one of two things. You either just run it and pull back or you wind up and you smash it. You never half ass it. It's always extreme and you break it with momentum. Or um, you've, you've been coming for a long time and you're exhausted and you just get there and fall back. Uh, this was clearly not the case. Winding up, smashing a level and going straight up to the next level. What happens at each level? You congest at every single level. You congest. So going up a little bit, the time frames, you congest at the key levels of significance all the time. She happens and rolls that way, my friends. This is the key aspect you want to uh, see and learn. Congestion at the level. The 47.5 congestion box. There it is. Bang. Let's do it in my favorite color, the one that stands out best. And nice and fat, cokey. There it is. It also was at the legacy funnel of... The last of the summer wine setup that gave you this target. That also saw you get a small continuation there. That's also seen you now pivot around there. Each of the levels. But you are bull. Even though people are scared right now, this is actually bull. This is incredible progress. Look at that. Just under. you congesting. you congesting. you congesting at this level. You're running. You're in a stall box trading between the 40 and the 44. You wake up and it's 54. How about them? That's what happens if you're sleeping. This is a really good uh, upward move. It's a classic case of key levels of significance, HVF method style, trading with micro fractals under key levels of significance for massive overperformance moves where you could, with leverage trading, be making a whole bunch more without having to go crazy. You could have super tight risk and expanded reward and you would have enjoyed it. You also could have jumped onto Bitcoin before it took out the previous high, that level, round about these levels as it was looking moving and you could have just taken a quick cheeky trade. Um, but anyway, now, where are we now? What's happening now? Let's deal with the here and now. Uh, many of you are asking, what now? What now, brown cow? Well, Bitcoin has been pulling back a little bit uh, during this period. And what's actually happening is some of the alts are a little bit waking up, um, which is good, good news. And uh, so uh, let's deal with what Bitcoin will do next. Because the long run, it's the direction God. The alts don't, aren't going to go up if, if Bitcoin throws down in a nasty manner. Don't think that's going to happen personally. But if it throws down in a nasty manner, it starts to become um, a problem for those alts. So what you need is Bitcoin, Bitcoin to do okay and the alts to do a whole bunch better and be back in the best alts. Uh, something we are discussing all the time in great detail. I just gave my uh, six top six to the guys from our analysis that we've touched on many times before. And we'll let one slip with you today at the end of this video. Yes, hit a like if you're looking forward to hearing who we think will be a possible outperformer for you. Um, and uh, we will recap one we gave you before as well. So let's just microanalyze on a lower time frame what's gone on. Um, so there were some possibilities we were trying. A question came, how far down will it go down if I'm missed and I need to get in? Um, one of the questions, the key questions that was asked. So we did a breakdown of possible reversals and where all those levels would be that it might come down to revisit. So overall, I'm not too intimidated by uh, the sell-off. Some of you might have said, wow, that's horrible what's going on. Um, actually, it's not too bad. Uh, it's good and natural to have a, a sell-off. You made this inverted HVFs target over there. Um, which is fine at 52.3. What are you actually getting structurally as a pattern? Well, let's talk about it. Fat Koki, we got a little bit of a slipping into a low here. And then indecision is broadening. Indecision is broadening typically. Um, those are your tops. Uh, those are your bottoms. And for me, there's a slight descent in uh, the splitter. That means you're probably basing out into a uh, low. So you get more volatility. You get these guys that thought it was up. Then you get those guys that think it's a down. But then there's no follow through and it's back up to a moderate level. So you're having expanding volatility. Now, if it had been pointing more upwards, that would just be late bulls about to get a, a hammering. Had it been like that, um, I would be fearful that we would uh, have a, a next stage of selling. We could still have, I just think the probabilities are significantly lower than if it was the blue scenario. So what's actually happening is we're having dip buyers showing up. There, another interesting level, 53.8. There, just through it, just through it. And now 
a stab through lower. These are what we call marginally lower lows without follow through. So what might happen is you come down again and you make the same low or a little bit lower or a little bit higher either side doesn't really matter and then the next one you fail to make a new low and that's when you start to get structure that gives you left shoulder heads and then another dip and you end up with this inverted funnel being a neckline for you in the future you see patterns talk to us I like patterns I like key levels I designed it so I should like it and it works it works for me as a trader it can work for you as a trader and it's simple concepts it's not um, Pythagoras's theorem this you know you should all be able to cope I'm not teaching you the square on the hypotenuse here um, is equal to the sum of the squares on the other two sides uh, even that's simple but you know this is simpler than that um, so you should be able to do it but you know how to you know how to, you need to be uh, around communities been doing it for a long time um, you need to practically observe it being done and then attempt it for yourself and keep building on it and then getting corrected and guided and so on like your dad teaching you to ride your bike uh, he didn't just lump you on the seat uh, and throw you down a mine shaft he actually probably ran alongside you for a while and that's kind of useful because it deals with a fear um, good 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 so let's just have a look at some of those comments uh, out of the draw tool so overall a bit of basing on Bitcoin will be good and then it'll start to support um, on the uh, alt side and the alts will start to firm up I just hodl my blue pot good to have a blue pot we are we've been blue pot long the cot was the final absolute confirmation that you be blue, blue cot long how many people told you exactly at that moment you really need to be getting 100% blue pot and as aggressive as you can within the confines of money management? How many people told you that a couple of days ago on Twitter and on uh, repeat re reiterated over here? Not too many, I suspect. Um, and for that, we deserve a share, I think. Otherwise, we feel sad and we don't want to talk to you so much anymore. We just talk to our, our premium guys because they're the only ones that love us. And you don't want me to be sad. Um, okay, uh, what else? The question is 85. So the, the targets that are generated from where, we've, from where we are for Bitcoin in the next leg is around about 83.75. Uh, um, I expect a bit of overperformance, so you could go 83, 86. Um, I think at that point you might have some fairly, um, fairly reasonable progress decay. That doesn't mean a huge pro, uh, pullback necessarily. But it could mean a reasonable one. We are quite fresh, by the way. So we're quite fresh, he says. Uh, I, I can remember what fresh used to mean in, uh, when I was a teenager. It's like, you know, iron those girls up a bit. That means you're a tad fresh. But in this instance, I'm talking about half-time oranges. Uh, Bitcoin itself is fairly uh, renewed, having gone through the process of uh, a 55% uh, half-time dip and then winding up and giving us this structure overall. This is quite a strong structure. And actually, we think he's almost prematurely got a little too excited. Um, and he's an early shooter, as they sometimes say. He, he's an early shooter. So this came kind of quick. We would have normally expected. I was a bit concerned with that flat bottom. And then our cot indicator came. And then we just had to flip. But I mean, we would normally have expected something more like that. And then the breakout move. He's almost preemptively run this cot indicator that we gave you and is freely available. A number of guys asking, how do I do it? How do I get it? How do I do it? How do I get it? He's giving me something for free. I want to get it. Um, what you have to do is you have to go search in the indicators. Then you type the surname of its founder who did the manipulation and you go hunt. And then you look for the word, the signal. Now there's a lot. I, could, I did a couple that were like beta drafts. I haven't yet worked how to delete them. So take the one that says the signal, the signal. So there's three components, the signal, the indicator and the amplifier. These are all aspects that we have analyzed, broken down, done a calculation for. You only, if you just want to just get the signal, this is the one that gives you that signal. You know, it's kind of like it, what it says on the tin. Um, so just search for Hunt Bitcoin um, Cot uh, Signal and grab the signal. And if you click on that, you will have that tag that is showing. And you should also have it up top here on your top left saying 
Hunt BTC cot indicator. This is not just the cot data. You don't need Hunt anywhere. You can get cot data anywhere. What we've done is we have eliminated what we don't need out of the cot data, and we've done a calculation on the two parts that we say are the most significant, the four largest buyers and the four largest sellers. We've done a differential of that. We've then compared it to compressions previously, and we said when you get tight beyond a certain point between the largest, uh, the largest sellers and the largest buyers, you are having a buy signal, and when you have a very high level of selling by the miners, um, you have a sell level, and we determine key levels for that. So if you want to see that indicator, you don't just want the signal, you want to understand, you type the indicator or you put hunt in again. Either will work. Well, he can't spell, especially when he's um, looking under the table. So just go hunt again. Uh, the indicator. Ah. I'm doing a bad job of finding it. Gadzooks. Um, the best demonstrator in the world. There it is. Would have been much easier just to stick with Hunt. There you go. For some reason, the search is flipping doolally. There you go. There's quite a few Hunts. The Insider. So it's called The Insider because you are getting inside information of what the biggest four guys that are selling and the biggest four guys that are buying, and they might not be guys, they could be transgender or better still institutions or minors. Um, so as a result, you click on that. Don't misgender them. They'll be very upset uh, with you. So that's, that's what we've created. That is the actual thing that we've created from the COD data. And that is a biggest squeeze that you've ever had since it's been running. And that's now over two years. Started in March 19, we're October of 21, two and a half years. The tiny, tiny difference between buyers and sellers and a massive increase in accumulation by the four biggest buyers. They are all insider traders. Something's going to happen, guys. Something's going to happen. They're going to go mass fiat proliferation again. We're going to go risk on again. Um, and Bitcoin, all the late FOMO crowd are going to pump it again. And these guys got in early. It's always the same. And the difference between those were at barely 1.5. So they were super close. Super, super close. Previously, we've not had such strong signals. So that's about the strongest signal you got. And we gave it to you. And if you listen, you made money. Be honest now. Some of you didn't listen because you don't have the faith. You've got to pay smoke enders to stop smoking sometimes. Um, because otherwise you just don't believe. You go, yeah, it's another guy's opinion on YouTube. Actually, it's a pretty good indicator, 10 out of 10, including four cells. Okay, so what's the question? Hex update. Hex looks a bit weak for me, if I'm entirely honest. Not super impressed with it technically. Um, it looks a bit weak, and um, but it's in its, its macro overperformance has been phenomenal. Um, but it's weak right now for me. It looks weak. And I've even drawn a possible complex uh, head and shoulders. I'm not saying it's head and shoulders. I'm just doodling. I'm looking at this. It's not so strong right now. Technically, that is garbage. It's a sideways move, but it's not a sideways in continuation pattern move like these, which I liked, and we traded four in a row. It's actually a little bit toppy in the middle, and a little bit tired. So it might shake its head, chill out, come a little bit off, go sideways for a while, and then go up again. It doesn't have to end in tragedy. But um, if there was a head and shoulder break, it's looking at 23 cents. So you won't enjoy that. Uh, so there you go. Uh, crash the hex price. If that were to happen, that's not my predominant. I don't trade head and shoulders, particularly on high, fast-moving tokens. I try to avoid counter trend. It's still inside overperformance bands. It could come all the way down there and then go up. It could do none of those things and just shake its heads. Remember, so we're not specifically bull market head and shoulder traders. There you go. You got an answer for hex. It's not looking that great. In comparison, there are better alts set up right now. But if you're state and you've been in from the beginning. You've done great.
There's no cause for complaint. No cause for complaint. Got to ask what happens on Pulse Network release. Are everyone going to sell their F hex and put it into P hex? Who knows? So other other alts apart from that one. Soul and other said somebody. So we will do one or two uh, small requests. Um, so other F we did mention this comparative, and this has been in a pullback state for quite a while. So other has actually been underperforming. Let me just lose that indicator again. So hunt is the key word to search. There's also the amplifier, by the way. So we finish on that topic. Um, go there. This is your pullback period. We still say we are very much expecting this in relative terms for ADA versus F. This is good structure. It did just pippy a bit early. A bit of a premature ejaculator. Fully didn't give us the ideal third um, impulse that we like. And what happens if you uh, shoot and scoot before it's your time? Um, you fizzle. You fizzle for a while. You, you reach for the, the other Pfizer product to get a, get, a, get a bit more party back in the can. Um, and that's exactly what's happening. By the way, it made its second inchum. So it's been totally compliant to that. And now it's in a pullback state and it's just above its funnel. So actually, it could be a very good accumulator against your A to F. Uh, and if it were to turn around and get shooting, scooting, um, you would be in from six and you would end up through 12. So whatever F does in a bull market as an alt with a beta to Bitcoin, ADA is going to do 2x that. Yeah, 6.3 to say 12.6. It would need a little bit of overrun. I think you'll probably see 13, maybe 14. It's a good lengthy structure. Don't forget in terms of you wanted ADA, you're going to get it. You're going to get both barrels of ADA. If you ask for it, you're going to get it, boy. If you're asking for it, you're going to get it. Don't ask for it if you don't want it. So now you're going to get it. Um, so this was the history of ADA S. And we, our overall position is, as a reminder, that you are in a channel rage. Outside of the, the pumpamentals of a listing, you've been in a channel range that you could have range traded for an extended period until the point that Ada said, we are getting more respect, we're doing a certain amount of delivery here, and now it's starting to be treated in a different light. That was its uh, square of relevance against, don't forget he was involved in the founding part of Ethereum. Charles. Every time it was at the bottom of that uh, square, it was a real buy. During the period of the range, it was actually a distribute. That was at 5,500 guay. And that was at 2,000 uh, gray, 20, 100 versus 55. And you could have range traded that. Then that was a key moment. And then when it returned, moved, it came back to the halfway mark. We call that the patty in our square, our SpongeBob SquarePants burger, where your locust patty, your new world order locust patty will reside. You can also wear SpongeBob shoes like me. Check out that. We can all eat locust boots, uh, locust uh, <laughs> burgers together. Anyway, so that's Ada with a bit of entertainment thrown in, and we still think um, twelve oh eight seven coming. So, yeah, that's the story on that. What was the other one? Soul. Uh, we have we we got you into Soul at the right time for those that listened, and I still think that one will come back very nicely. But it is down at one fifty five, but. But, 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 it's doing um, just fine. It's doing just fine. We think it will um, be a shining star, but it is off a little bit. Uh, and there are others that are going to move faster sooner, in our opinion. So whilst I am a holder, uh, right now, I would say it's not set up um, much better than men, most things. And in some ways, maybe even a little bit less brilliant. Um, we needed to find a bit of a bid. It did make the 61.8 return. between that. And that's always important for me to see. But it is quite low here. We need to see that finishes basing. It kind of needs to do a bit of rounded bottoms. We all love a rounded bottom. We all love the rounded bottoms in little boy pippy blue. There you go. Um, FTM. Yeah. It's a small one. Be careful. Well, it's not really, but... 
That's one person requesting a lot of times, I think. Or the... Because <laughs> FTM, um, maybe I'm being racist-like. Don't be racist. That's phantom, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Uh, I have to go search for it because it's kind of on the fringes. Generally, if it's not in the top 25, apart from one or two shooter and scooters that are in great shape, I don't tend to have them. Wow, it's gone up. Well done if you're a holder. That looks nice, actually. Actually, it looks nice, but I mean, you can't buy it. You can't chase in there, even though it may well go higher. It looks nice. Well done if you're in it. I'm not in it. Um, maybe it'll catch up. What number is it now? It's in a bit of a tear there. But uh, it's very, it would be very foolhardy to chase in. But if we have a great alt run that could continue to overperform, it's kind of like looking at Luna for a while. I've wanted to get in, but it's just done too much. It's kind of high and it's still strong. It's not inviting you in. Technically, you should ask for an invitation to go into it. How do you buy an upside like that? It's kind of dangerous. If you're really sure that there's great news coming and a lot of the market hasn't priced any of that in and there's going to be even more upside to come, uh, you can try find something on a lower time frame. So you can drop, 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 you know, to 30 minutes. Maybe you get a small continuation pattern, five minutes. You see, I can't bring myself to get too greedy in these situations. You've also now done a bit of a broadening pattern here. Yeah. So there's now a bit more uncertainty about this fella. Bull pole, a little bit of sending. It's thrashing around. But if we get a super bull, it can pull back and it can still go up higher. But it's not an invitation. It's not really a good invitation to get in. So if you're in before, great. Stay in it. Hoddle it. Um, your stop is a long way down. It's just gone up uh, really strong. Um, nice for you. I'm happy. It's nice to see community, uh, YouTube, I mean, uh, followers making money. If that's your case, well done. Um, so let's show you one that I think will give you one leak out from our premium area that we think could do well. You're going to be shocked. You're going to boo. It's not a popular name. It's one many people love to hate, I think. But uh, you, learn, you have to learn to be dispassionate. Learn to be dispassionate uh, about it. Um, who knows? And we, we did get seduced once before. And that is uh, Ripple. So you're saying, what? That's it? Ripple? How can you even mention it? Oh, I'm so bad. They're bankers coin. They're all bankers coins. I've got bad news for you. They're all bankers coins. Your freedom is not here, my friends. Just make the money. Shut up and make the money. So the reason we like it, um, there's a couple of reasons. I'll start with some soft reasons. Against the dollar, that's a 61.8 over there. This was a super spike event. It got bad news, bad news. It got really flattened, came all the way down to its legacy funnel. We traded that long, by the way. It was throwing money on at us. So I've actually made a bundle on it, um, and I'm really grateful. And I think it might do it again. Um, so you've got your second and your down leg, so you're hunting for a third uh, in there. Um, but more interesting is cross valuations. Go look at your domination charts. Go look at your BTC charts um, and see where, how it's looking. So let's take you in here and look at the macro on BTC. And then I'll finish with what I think is the best one. You see, um, you see what you got right here. Um, in fact, that's how much history have we got. That's Binance. Binance is terrible for history uh, because they were a relatively new exchange. You lose a lot. Um, so I, I personally suggest that there is a base coming here. And that you're dipping into that final point of support. You've done a little bit of a type three. It was looking vulnerable that we expected another down leg here. See the grind line there? And that was looking a bit flat. You spill, you spill. So that's, you know, you've kind of had one leg. Let's say we quite a big third leg. And now you've had a second leg made up of two stages. And now you're having your third and final leg of a falling wedge. Bit of a type two sticking its nose out the bottom. 
It looks even more clearly uh, optimistic. I'll show you the Ripple dominance, which is against all markets, not just Bitcoin. So don't forget, alts all suffered a bit together. And here's what I like uh, about this as a macro structure. 3% dominance of Ripple is a key level. Again, key levels of significance. They work everywhere, guys. There's that blue line. You had the this. So you've got a W bottom over there, all with a neckline at the three most logical level. That takes you to virtually 5%, 4.89. Then you've got falling wedge. So don't forget, this is Ripple measured against everything. Ripple dominance will have Bitcoin, so it's like the XRP BTC, but it'll also be XRP all the other alts. So they have the whole basket of the rest of the world of major alts in there. Falling wedge, three impulse, perfect, 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 slow, super supported here, bump. Makes the three again, down, 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 very low vol, final little pippy downside, sitting on the small fractal of a baby funnel that you had for the upside there. Real support level there. Now that gives you this. In big, fat, simple, cokey draws. Straight into that. Straight into that. Straight into that. I'm going, well, give it to me one more time. So just to give you an idea, um, this is against dominance in percentages. So you're not getting a target out of that. But if you made that HVF structure uh, and or the double bottom, which are all clustered roughly on the round level, you would be going to a number, tidies up his face a little bit there, around 5%. So if it's 2.15% relative to the others, now the others all go up and get bigger, Yet Ripple goes two and a half times larger relative to these others that are all getting bigger in an alt Bitcoin bull market into Christmas. How much extra performance are you getting? We could be talking about quite a super spike there. How many of you understood what I just said? How many of you understood what I just said? Put up your hand and say, aye, aye, skipper. Or say, play it again, Sam, if you did not. And I will repeat it one more time. So remember, percentage of dominance means the scale that you are getting bigger relative to the entire pools getting bigger. If you stand still and the entire pool gets 50% bigger, you are down by a third in your dominance. Simple as that. You, got, you, you just stood still and the whole pool got, your relative dominance is down. If you are actually going to go up two and a half times dominance in an already expanding, it means you're getting a two and a half times bigger slice of pizza. And the pizza, instead of being an 11 inch pizza, is going to be a 21 inch pizza. Guess what? You're now feeding your whole family instead of just yourself with that single slice. If you understand that, you understand what I'm on about. So go work out what that is in dollars or set your alerts, as I have done, for the run of that trade. And wait, we also know that Ripple has fundamental news overhanging its head, a bit of an anvil over its head, such as the SEC's uh, action against it. So again, you could get uh, news-based, a spike, real news-based that could be fast cash. Now, I know you naughty little boys and girls and every other gender love a bit of fast cash. You should be more patient, but nonetheless, who knows? You might just get it. Uh, so W bottom, a potential upside HV. It's not immediately. Don't don't tweet tomorrow. Oh, you never talk about I get these trolls. You never talk about your losing trades. It's still down. What happened to silver? I get a, a guy who just absolute pain in the ass. I said, mate, if you listen to my content, silver's a bad, bad, bad trade, bad investment until it's suddenly very right. And when it suddenly turns very right and goes up a hundred X, you won't be around anymore for me to go, uh huh. But, you know, they do what they do. And those are what people are like. Um, so they want to keep reminding me about the fact that I said silver will do uh, well in reset. And I stand by that. Um, and actually, he will disappear when silver hits 
three digits of that you can be assured so here you go you're at the relative low two you can still do this and you still might make a calm leisurely third impulse if it is to do it and by the way the only reason this is interesting is what if i am wrong so i'm giving you situations where we explain what if i was wrong what do you do the whole benefit of this is that your closeout point is really nearby so you can be extra large size with a very short distance. You close the trade right here. So there you go. We're giving you the whole idea. This is not financial advice. This is me talking aloud about naughty little trading endeavors that I do. That's your invalidation level. Just above that right there. You see that? That's your invalidation point. Can you survive? I think you can. I think it's 2.05 and you'll be getting in at 2.15. That is ten, a tenth of 1% dominance lost. And you already, okay, it's not done what I want. But if you win, not a tenth of 1%, you get three full percent virtually, almost. That's 300 versus 10. That's a 10 is to 300 trade. It is a 1 is to 30 trade. And you could possibly hold some. There's other localized highs. That doesn't mean you stop here, but you probably have some form of a break. You could trade over performance. It's first in a new trend. You could take a partial close. You suddenly have options, and now you're the boss. Okay. Don't forget to book a call. We've got so much more, but I'm afraid it's for the people that are sharing and caring and giving us their hard-earned energy, which is in this case uh, crypto funds and cash to learn and get all the key secrets. Uh, you can do it too. Um, and you can see it. We had a number of guys saying as soon as they came on within uh, weeks, they've already paid for their program and they're just grateful and they've got looking forward to the rest of the year in terms of what we've done and the updates. So that's great. And we're always very happy. Thank you to my lovely trusting people. Um, we know it takes a lot to throw money into the ether to someone somewhere far in the world. No, you will have a telephone call. By the way, this is an important point on this. We do not absolutely take everybody. I'm afraid we've turned two or three people away in the last month. If you phone, if you're dealing with um, one of our reps and you think, oh, I'm not sure if you guys are legit. I'm sorry, we just don't take you. If you haven't been watching and you're not sure if we're right, don't take any risks. We don't, we don't take you. If you're not sure about uh, anything or you have, um, you're wobbling, um, or you have fantasies about uh, instant millionaire status. Uh, we're not a trade feed. We're a learning environment. We're implementing that learning together and practically doing it. You will potentially grow immensely in your talents, skills, and your wealth. And of course, we're also a reset community. We're protecting what we want to do that continues to grow out. In fact, I'll be traveling. I'll be traveling. I'll be talking to you from different lands. A couple of uh, trips planned. Um, so stay close. We look forward to doing that. Um, and thank you very much for watching us. Let's see how that one pans out. Uh, and we will see you again soon. Don't also, little clue, uh, you can keep an eye on audio as well, which I gave you last time, so it's not an extra one. Um, and you can keep a watch on that. I'm not going to do the charts. We've got to go now. Love you lots. Thanks for following. Um, give us a share. We appreciate it. All the best for now. Bye.